I know. It's adorable, right? That, that's me, the big Spider-Man, and well, the cuter one, that's my son when he was two and a half years old. We just picked up our costumes, and the first thing that I did was rush him to Grandma's house to show her how awesome we were going to look on Halloween. Living my best life, showing my son how to be a hero, spider pose, humongous muscles, ready to take on anything. Now, while I still agree that it's a super cute photo, I look at it now and I wonder, what was I actually teaching my son? You see, Halloween didn't go at all as planned. After our epic dress rehearsal the day before, my son refused to put his costume on. <laughs> he threw it on the ground, said, no, I don't want to dress up. I'll just be me. But why? I, I didn't understand. You're supposed to want to wear the costume. We've been training for this for generations. <laughs> My dad taught me, and his dad taught him, and there I was, doing what felt natural, showing my son how to be a hero. After a series of failed negotiations, we headed out trick-or-treating. Me, head to toe in spandex, <laughs> and the boy, quite pleased with himself in his jeans and hoodie. And, you know, it's worth noting that one of us looked really ridiculous walking through the neighborhood. <laughs> and, and it wasn't the kid. You know, I was sure he'd grow to this ridiculous fantasy of just wanting to be himself. But <laughs> what he was actually doing was showing me what it is to be a real hero. So how is it that we've been getting it wrong for generations, but my two-year-old had it figured out? Just be yourself. I discovered something that I refer to as hero culture that I'd like to share with you. So ever since the incredible success of the movie Star Wars, there's been a very specific formula that has been followed by scriptwriters almost exclusively. It's the secret sauce of how to write a box office blockbuster. In brief, your protagonist must face a crisis, fall and hit rock bottom, go through this painful evolution as a prerequisite to greatness. Only then do they become celebrated as a hero. Now, this pattern, it dates back to the Greek tragedies, but Ever since the incredible success of Star Wars, this hero's journey formula has been followed with such frequency in movies, in books, in social media, everywhere, that it has caused a blueprint in our psyche. And it's changed the way that we tell stories, and it's changed the way that we live. Think of the last story that you told, like canceling dinner plans with friends at the last minute, or... Um, the gripping tale we share with anyone who will listen about who done us wrong at the office, or the explanation we give to the nice officer to justify why going over the speed limit was totally unavoidable. <laughs> Social conditioning or indoctrination, we, we took this captivating formula that's designed to teach us life lessons and made this monumental leap to a universally accepted idea that we have to live this way. And in the business world, we're entrapped by hero culture, where people are praised and promoted based on their ability to abandon lunches and evenings and weekends and give up their physical and their mental health, all in the name of being the company hero. As a junior sales manager, it was made extremely clear to me that 40 hours a week was the bare minimum, but to get noticed around here, 60 was what was expected. As a sales rep on the road when we attended conferences, the unwritten rule was 
you better be the last to bed and the first to breakfast. And we've all had that authoritarian leader, but this isn't simply the failure of leadership. They're just treating us the way that they were treated by the people who manage them. This is the failure of a system destined to collapse. And this pattern needs to stop. All the while, I, I kept working on my son every Halloween. I kept asking him, don't you want to dress up? <laughs> and the answer was always the same. No, I don't want to dress up. I just want to be a boy. Yeah, I still wasn't getting it, but if you think about it, these examples are everywhere. Think of how we praised our healthcare workers during the COVID crisis for foregoing their physical and their mental health. As if their jobs weren't enough of a burden, we made posters of them wearing capes, and we interviewed them on national TV thinking that that would make it all worth it as we left them slumped over in the hallways, broken and burnt out. They didn't deserve to be made into a spectacle. They deserved better. They deserved to be cared for as humans and should have been given the space to make their physical and mental health the priority. It's no different in professional sports. Critics went after Olympic gold medalist Simone Biles for prioritizing her mental health instead of sticking to the script of being the Olympic hero. Defending her position to step down from competitive gymnastics, she said, we have to protect our minds and our bodies, not just go out and do what the world wants us to do. You know, despite disappointing couch potatoes and corporate sponsors everywhere who were banking on her to satisfy their need for entertainment, she had the resilience to stay real to herself, and she got it. And she has caused a ripple effect that started to change the way that we think. So how is it that we have so incorrectly defined who and how someone becomes a hero in their own life. We prioritize that being an illusory hero was the primary purpose of being human, altogether ignoring the human inside who was struggling to keep up. We created a life that promotes insatiable lifestyles, making mortgage payments instead of memories, abandoning contentment as the true purpose of being human. Now this last summer, after all of the planning and organizing and packing the trailer to take the kids camping for two weeks, my wife had only one request. And it was that when we reached the historic gold rush town of Barkerville, British Columbia, that we have one of those pioneer days, old timer, sepia tone family photos taken to commemorate our trip. Well, there was no way that I could get my son to dress up like a voyageur. <laughs> he had an epic meltdown on Main Street in front of everyone. Dad, I'm not wearing a stupid hat with a stupid dead animal on it. <laughs> I held him square by his shoulders, and I said, put on the Friggin' costume. <laughs> this is the only thing your mother wanted on this whole trip. Don't be a disappointment. <laughs> he looked at me straight in the eye with tears in his. And he said, why can't I just be me? How come just being me isn't enough? All the chances I had, it took my son to teach me how to be human. He's never wanted to be our definition of a hero. He's only ever just wanted to be himself. And despite my best efforts to the contrary, he's had the resilience to stay real to himself since the beginning. Trying to live our 90-year lives like a script that was written for a 90-minute movie has changed the way we think, and it's changed what we expect of each other. 
just because we learn this way doesn't mean that we have to live this way. It's time that we separate the hero from the human and put the hero back where they belong, on the screen, in the books, and on stage. It's enough to be human. It's always been enough. Thank you. Thank you.